Sunday Too Far Away is a 1975 released Australian drama directed by Ken Hannam. Yes, uh, and don't forget, click down here anytime during the video uh, to subscribe if you like what you're watching. Uh, so yeah, it's basically um, a story of uh, uh, some sheep shearers in the 50s uh, shearing some sheep. That's it really. <laughs> it shows, you know, one... One season of of their work. There's a group of what they get up to: the hard drinking, um, you know, working through the week really hard, and then spending all the money they earn at the weekend on booze and gambling, and then starting all over again on the Monday. Um, and all the while, in the background of this story, is is sort of hints at, at uh, a possible uh, their pay rate being lowered by the government, um, and, you know, and the threat of that hanging over them. Um, because in reality, in 1955, there was a there was a strike uh, by sheep shearers, um, which went on for a few months at this uh, lowered rate. So, um, but yeah, this is kind of the the build up to that, and and just shows you the life of of these guys, which was you know quite a hard back breaking job to do uh, for not a lot of money and pretty rubbish conditions. Yeah, <laughs> so. Yeah. Um, yeah, a little, uh, just a slice of, of 50s Aussie life, basically. Yes. Yeah. A film about sheep shearing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's what it is. It's, uh, it's, uh, I, I saw it a, a few years ago, I think we've said before, and we've done a few Australian films. I'm a big fan of Australian cinema. I don't know why, I've always liked their humour mm. and they're just the way they make... I, I'm a, I love Australian cinema, um, so I would have come across this at some point. Um but it is basically a film about... I mean, it's a very blokey film, isn't it? It is. There's not it's many kind of women in it. They're barmaids cult of, and... Cult one of, of masculinity and all that crazy yes. stuff. Yeah. Um, so I suppose... I mean, obviously, it is of its time. Um, although, as I said, I, I witnessed my mum do sheep shearing. So I have a go. bit of a link to sheep shearing <laughs> myself. Um, so it's not all men. But back then, <laughs> back then it was. So, yes, yeah. this is 1955 and... It is showing a world we we have kind of moved on from. I mean, there is a sequence in there when I think it's the the daughter of the of the farmer asks if she can watch yeah. what they're doing, and they're like, "No women allowed." <laughs> and you're like, "Okay, that was a different time." Yeah. yeah. Um, but they let her in the end, and hence you get a bit of showing off from the men mm -hmm. and stuff. the The title itself, uh, "Sunday Too Far Away," actually comes from uh, what's the kind of an old wives' lament. Um, which is, um, so Friday night, uh, he's too tired. Saturday night, he's too drunk. Sunday night, he's too far away. So it's kind of, you know, that's it's that kind of, I suppose, an old, you know, if you're married to a sheep shearer, you're not going to have much time for anything. No, I mean, that's brought up, isn't it, by one of the characters who, who hasn't seen his, over the 20 years, I mean, he's been married, he's seen his wife for like three of them. That's right, yeah. exactly, yeah. Because, I mean, I think the thing with sheep, well, any any kind of this kind of labour. I mean, I suppose miners to a point mm. is you you would go away and you would find a, a yeah. You have a, to go to where the work is. You have to is. go to where the work mm. is, you know. And in this case, it's just different stations plotted all over the outback. And yes, you might be away for weeks or years on end, and and that's that's kind of you know where this where the title comes from. Mm. So I think it's a it's a good title. I thought it was quite an interesting different title. So it is the kind of it is showing that kind of Australian man's world. Um, but yes, it was, you know, this is back 10 years after the war ended. Life was very different. People did not earn the money that we earn today. And these are working class men. And yes, their, their pay is not great. And when it, when it's, when it's threat that it's going to be taken down, then, then what do you do? You, you fight back. So this, yeah. this, although the film is not solely on that, I think originally this film was written more about the strike and, mm. and, and the unions, because obviously this is like the, you know, the introduction of unions in the first place. The actual film that they got was less about that and more about yeah. the life and the day-to-day -day lives of these men. And obviously there's a lot of grog yep. being spilt around, <laughs> um, so a lot of drunkenness on screen. The obligatory Australian barroom brawl. Barroom brawls, <laughs> yeah. And some, there's, some quite, there's actually a couple of quite comical moments mm. in there. I think there's, there's a very funny... Um, uh, speech about one of the ex cooks on on the farm, which is yeah. quite funny. So there's yeah, I mean if you like that kind of good humoured banter, you know mm. Australian banter, then there's there's plenty of that in there. 
It was actually the first of the um, what's now known as the Australian kind of film rena renaissance or the f Australian new wave that mm. came out in the mid-70s. So films like uh, this and Wake and Fright and um, Walkabout and even Mad Max and mm. things like that kind of, you know, this, this huge kind of big... There wasn't really much, although there was Australian cinema before that, there was nothing really grandiose about mm. it. And, and suddenly in, this, in the early 70s, you started to get... You know, new filmmakers came out and tried you know different daring things, mm. and and really you know some some not so good, some pretty poor ones came out of it. And, and there's obviously the exploitation yeah. stuff, um, which I, I guess Mad Max kind of comes I would into, say doesn't yeah, it? yeah. And, and and other films like it, and Peter Weir who made Pic Picnic at Hanging Rock mm. and and films like that, The Last Wave, which is a really good one. So yeah, this kind of. Big surgeons. I think this was the first film that was really kind of made aware of it on the international stage. This was the first Australian film that got into the direct, um, is it the directors week at the Cannes Film Festival. So this was like the first one that that, that kind of got out of Australia mm. and, and and made the made the world sit up and go, oh, Australia make films too, do they? <laughs> so um, yeah, I mean, it's not it's it's slightly different to some of the other ones we've done. But it's a it's a it's a good kind of good yarn. Yeah, I think. I mean, it's almost documentary like in, in parts, especially when you're watching when them you're shearing. Watching this, yeah, um, yeah, it all looks very authentic. And, and uh, what I've read about it, apparently, people who actually live that life said, you know, it's a very accurate representation of of how it was. Right. So um, there aren't too many films out there about sheep shearing. I don't, don't think there's don't another one. Where there's the uh, there's the Sundowners, which is a really good one. Uh, with uh, Robert Mitchum and Deborah Carr and Peter Ustinov. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's actually filmed, that was filmed in the same place that this one was filmed. I'm not a massive fan, I have to say, of sheep shearing. <laughs> the sheep shearing is... genre. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and in fact, there's a couple of moments, I think there's a moment in there which I thought did feel a bit old school, and that's when there's like a scene where they dance with the sheep. Yeah, I yeah. Was like, yeah could, Don't could, think they could would have done allow that these they days. Wouldn't allow that nowadays. No. But you know, it's a film of a, it's from a different time, it's set in a different time. And it's from a different time. Yep. It's got a good cast. There's a lot of well-known Aussie faces in there. Um, if you know Australian cinema, I'm sure you'll recognise. I think it's uh, John Hewitt. He plays a character called Ugly. He turns up in a few film, films over the years. There's John Hargreaves, who's not actually credited, and he's been in lots of uh, Australian films over the years. And he's kind of in this film a couple of times. And then the main guy, Foley, is played by Jack Thompson, who has... He's kind of probably the biggest star in this film. Mm. He's done lots of um, both American and Australian films. He was in was it Star Wars film. He was in episode two, yeah, as Clee Glass, Iron Lars's father. Who, well, if you've watched Star Wars, you'll know who that is. He's also in Flesh and Blood, isn't he? The Ver Verhoeven, he is. uh, sort of medieval. Yes. Uh, Sword fest, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> yeah, that's a great. I haven't seen it for years. No, I'd quite like to watch that one again. Mm. But uh, yeah, so he's he's cropped up. He's still and he still works today. He's got quite a big beard at mm. the moment. So yeah, I mean it's uh it's kind of a yeah, it's a it's a good fun Australian flick. Yeah. I think. If yeah, if you want to if you want to have a glimpse into a you know a past gone era, um, you know, is an interesting window into it. You know, it's not something. I would have ever have chosen to watch. Just I saw it. Oh, I'll watch that. It was only for this that I've watched it. For, for that fact, I would say it, it's in. It's an interesting watch because it's not something I'd ever really known anything about. I didn't know there was a strike by sheep shearers in the fifties in Australia. Now, now I know that. I could go and read more about it if I wanted to. Um, might do that. Might not. But, <laughs> but it's certainly yeah. It's an interesting little window into that life, which. I didn't know anything about before, so it's, for that, you know, I think it's worth it. And the, you know, the, it's not a. We talked about how it's quite a blokey film and things like that, but they do, you know, there are sensitive moments where they show their, yeah. you know, their um, feelings. Yeah, <laughs> and they, there's some wiggling of naked bums as well. There is, yeah. It's, I mean, actually, one one film. I, there's actually one film I, that I feel this is quite close to, and it's actually one of my favourite films, and that's Cool Hand Luke, mm. which is the the, the Paul Newman one. Set in, in kind of the um, the prison in the, the southern states of America, um, that's a sixties film, um, but that's obviously predominantly men in that yeah. film, and there is a woman that, that does come into that as well. But this, I think, this film feels quite a lot like that one because, well, I, su I suppose obviously the, the 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 male side of it, but also that kind of that dusty outdoorsy yeah, yeah. feel to it too. 
Um, and there is, being Australia, there's a lot of kind of shots of nothing or sunsets <laughs> and mountains in the distance. And no, I can, think the, no kangaroos show up. No kangaroos. Disappointingly. No, the, um, I quite like the cinematography in this. Mm. I think, you know, I mean, a lot of these films, it's not hard, I suppose, to, to get a nice camera not panorama really, no. in, in Australia <laughs> if you're out in the outback. But, uh, you know, the beginning of this scene, I think the very first shot is the sun blazing in the sky. Mm. And you get this, uh, this this kind of car. So you get Foley, the main character, in his car. He's kind of driving down this, this, this you know, out out back road, and he's falling asleep at the wheel. And then he kind of crashes the car in quite an impressive manner. Um, and yeah, that kind of has that that you know that that walkabout kind of feel mm. that you get in that you only get in Australian films, really, and I suppose in some American. But in America, you always even though America's really big. You kind of feel like there is a town close by. Yeah. In Australia, you get the feeling that if you, there's just like nothing. You could be hundreds of miles. You could be from hundreds anything, of miles from yeah, anything, yeah. exactly. Which I think makes it all the more, you know, makes those kind of films almost quite lonely mm. and, and isolated and stuff like that. If you want something different, a little bit different to maybe some of the other films we've covered, then I recommend you give this a go. And you actually you can at the moment, yes, because uh, it's on Amazon Prime, mm-hmm. which we have obviously mentioned in the past before. <laughs> we love Amazon. Prime. We love <laughs> Amazon Prime. There's some actually, if you dig deep, there are some actually quite. Int- I mean, there's some good films on there that you know, there's some famous films mm. on there. But there's also, I suppose, there is on Netflix as well. If yeah. you know, if you know where to look, then you know you, you do turn up the odd. Mm. Gem occasionally and stuff that uh, yeah is not particularly easy to to find on any other sort of medium. Like if if you wanted to watch this on DVD, for example, as far as I'm aware, there's only an Australian release and that's it. Right. So yeah. you would have to track that down. Um, so yeah, it's quite good for for stuff that isn't shown on TV. Yeah, exactly. Very often, or if ever, uh, and is difficult to find on on DVD. So yeah, picture isn't great. It's not great, but no. it's not. I wasn't really surprised that it was a bit murky and a bit muddy. It, um, yes. Yeah, I think again, a film like that, it, it it would be nice if it was cleaned up, so you, you know, the you could appreciate the the vistas and the cinematography a bit more. But you know, it, because it's an old film, it's not particularly well known, and there's not a. A rabid fan base clamouring for a (laughs) a restoration is probably never going to get one. So that was Sunday Too Far Away and uh, we hope you enjoyed this video and as always if you've seen the film we'd love to know about it so let us know in the comments below. Yep and come on join us on Twitter and Facebook chat about some films over there and uh, check out some of our other videos there'll be links somewhere around on this screen and uh, on our channel page Uh, and join us again next week for another one.